It is a great joy to um, have Matea out here and Brighton out and Brighton's wife is Dorothy's out here as well. Um, you know, you guys have been hearing about the ministries that have been going on in Malawi and Mozambique for 12 years or something. Now, finally, you know, uh, Matea is able to come and Brighton was out here at the same time. And so if you would please welcome our brother, Matea and Brighton. <laughs> is good yes and what we know all the time how is on say uh i'll speak in chichewa firstly let me just give a short introduction about myself i know that i've got short time so i'll try to speak as much as i can in that short space of time I am Stanley. Does matter. Does matter. Matea Nganga. Matea Nganga. She do it in Matea. In short, we just say Matea. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor of a church which is named Ladder to Heaven in Malawi and in Mozambique. I've got a wife. I've got some few children, only nine. <laughs> God has blessed me with the wife that I am with. She helps me a lot. Does a lot more than I can do. She still works very hard even though I'm not present. Even while I am here, I am happy because I know that she's doing a lot. Please help me pray for my wife so that God can give her a long life so that she can be a helper to me. Amen. Amen. Just a brief uh, introduction about the ministry we have in Malawi. From the uh, ministry that we have, I was so blessed. We have planted a church in Mozambique and in Malawi. We needed so many things to help us uh, save God. But I thank God because of you, our brethren here in the U.S., for the tremendous work that you do. I know it's not only Pastor John and the team that comes to Malawi, but because of you who support him. Even though you are here, but whatever you do is not in Malawi. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you do is also seen in Malawi. God literally bless you. You have blessed us in so many things. You've given us Bibles. And even some of the clothes that some of you women uh, make, you've given us. But our brother, Pastor John and Lou, they have really been helpful to us in teaching of the word. But also during the past season that we have just passed by. We had 
frauds in Malawi. I know that my brother John told you about the frauds in Malawi. I feel so honored and humbled to thank you for the great work that you've done to help us. To the people that you never saw, even spoke to them, but your help was in time for them. May God literally bless you. Please continue praying for us because many are our problems. Malawi government is trying to do their best to move these people from law flooding areas to upper land. But as you know, politics, politicians, most of the times just speak and most of the time don't do half the things that say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> It's like a song that they sing every day. But we don't see results. People are suffering whilst in the uh, tents. Just imagine somebody leaving their house and they are living somewhere at a camp because of the floods. They have nothing. They are only hope is help that comes from through the government. And some well wishers. They've got nothing to help them. They don't have anyone to lean on. But their eyes fixed on the government. Their eyes fixed on organizations. And just uh, think, just imagine that the government is sitting idle doing nothing. And even the organizations they've just sat. Put. Just imagine how are these, go these people going to survive? It is really pathetic <coughs> and uh, really worrisome. But all the time, God is good. Amen. 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 We do pray for them that God should do something for them. There are some other people who are serving God as uh, leaders in the camps. How can they serve God when their stomachs are empty? How can they serve God when they themselves are suffering? Let's continue praying for such people. Because in uh, circumstances like that, sometimes it's very easy to go wayward. Amen. Amen. The other thing is this. And these people are sitting in the camps because they don't have anything. Sometimes they wander into the forest cutting trees so that they can sell and find something to eat. So don't uh, that it's not good. This is the other thing that we have to pray for them. Maybe they could be in, in a camp for three, four, five months. In a camp for three, four, five months. And these people sometimes they're there, they're not married. Akwatira, koma banja siku end up. They are married, but there is no uh, relationship. Ndikutanda uzanji. What am I saying? Akumanga tent imozi, yogona to twenty. There is one tent, and in that twenty sleeps about twenty uh, families. Amuna koka asankido gana twenty. 
10 Timothy. And maybe they will choose, maybe the other tent is for men, and that is 20 men in one tent. And one, 20, one other tent, 20 women. And another tent for the kids. Just imagine. You know, these people, though they are married but sleeping in different uh, tents, they are separated. There is no connection, connectivity in the, between them. Amen. Amen. And uh, in so doing, it can also lead to many other sins. Amen. Amen. Please help us in prayers that uh, things should change. I think that what I've spoken, though very little, but it's enough, and uh, he who has got ears have heard. My, my, my prayer and my prayer there is nothing so important than prayer. In prayer, there is everything. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This morning I want to share you a word of God. I've got a short message, but I'll try also that God should help me. After leading the word of God, I was so touched. I saw the glory of God. I want to talk to or share with you the word entitled the donkey. A donkey is an animal. I've never heard that people eat donkeys or they, are, they put them in the butcher stores. Never heard that one is keeping maybe a thousand or more. It's just a burden animal, maybe useless animal. And the work that the donkey does is a little job, just culling and pouring. Nobody thinks about the donkey. But I want to say this. There was only one donkey. Out of all the donkeys that were there that time. And that donkey was so lucky. Amen. Amen. Tell your friend that a lucky donkey. Tell your friend that a lucky donkey. A lucky donkey. Why was it that this donkey was so lucky? Out of the donkeys that were in that land, only one was so lucky. Do you know that we ourselves, we are like donkeys? Do we know that we are donkeys? Amen. Amen. But we are lucky donkeys in the villages or places where we are coming from. What am I saying? I said that in that village there were so many donkeys. Donkeys that were useless. Even when people saw them, they never thought good of them. But there is something that made one donkey to be lucky. Amen. Amen. Maybe you can read in English. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 11, starting from 1 verse to 11. Who we'll read in English from the book of Romans chapter 11, 1 to 11 as well. 
Yes. Israel is not cast away. I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? Many, may it never be. Yeah, Romans? Yes, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. Just read the whole. I'll read again. Israel is not cast away. I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be, for I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Just leave it there. We're not going to read the whole chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. What is the word saying? He did not leave even one. Amen. Amen. He chose each and everyone to partake of this grace. But it takes only those that are lucky. As all the donkeys were in the village. The donkey that was even counted never did any job. But Jesus said, go into the village and you will find a donkey. A donkey that has never done any work. And bring that donkey and bring it here. Jesus never spoke about all the other donkeys but the only donkey a donkey that never did anything in short I would say a useless donkey go bring that donkey bring it Jesus was on a journey to Jerusalem. Let's hear what happened to the donkey. As Jesus was going to Jerusalem, and when people saw Jesus coming, they took off their clothes and uh, laid them on the ground and took olive uh, palm branches and laid them down. Just imagine. Jesus never set his foot on the clothes and Jesus never set his foot on the palm branches but a useless donkey was the one walking on top of their courts. Was the one walking on palm. Branches. Why is it that the donkey had the privilege of, of walking on the clothes? Why did he walk on the olive branches? And I hear that people were singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. They were rejoicing that the son of God is coming. Everything that they were doing, they were doing in honor and praises to the son of God. But the son of God never set his foot on the clothes or on the palm branches. But the donkey don't you know that you are a lucky donkey? Amen. Amen. Before we were born again, we had so many other names. But we are no longer called by those worldly names. Because of what? Because we are a lucky donkey. We are carrying Jesus and we are walking with him. People does not see you the way you were before you got born again. But they are seeing Jesus inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
maina ametme nao oshedwa we have got names or nicknames that we people gave us maybe because we were drunkards maybe because we led a very loose life people gave us names that were meaningless but because of jesus all those names were have all have been removed people when they see us today they don't see us the way we used to be they are seeing Jesus in our midst. We are receiving all the praises and all the glory because of Jesus. Just imagine a useless donkey like myself. That I don't speak in your mother's tongue language. A poor like a church lot. But because of the Jesus that I'm calling, I can come and stand before you. I'm coming here to the land of the free and the redeemed. And not because of school. Not because of money. Not because that I am famous. But because of the Jesus that I am calling. Don't you know that you are lucky? <coughs> wherever you go calling Jesus you will receive the glory that Jesus gives you. people will not see where you are coming from or what your education is like but they will see Jesus just thank God because of that that today you are as you are you know your backgrounds. You weren't connected with others. People did not like you in your community because of your habits and uh, the way you lived. But today, because you have allowed Jesus to be your savior and walk with him, you have got good and glorious names. God should be praised. Amen. Amen. Did you ever think or do you know that you are a lucky donkey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beginning to know, today, know this that you are lucky. There are so many, there were so many others uh, with great names and uh, well known. But because they don't know Jesus, they are unlucky donkeys. There are so many highly educated with masters, PhD and all those. But because they don't have Jesus, they are so unlucky. What am I trying to say? Where I am coming from in Malawi, yes, there are so many people there with high education, professors and doctors. There are others who are also rich. But they've never had a chance as I have today to stand before you. Who am I? But the one who is inside of me. Amen. Amen. Paul said these words. To die or to live is gain. But to be with Jesus, I count it joy. Philippians 1, verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21. Tell your friend 
one sitting next to you in a joyful way I am a blessed donkey <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Maunena ole ondo che pangata mene wa. These are the words I had for you today. Mukama kala. Wherever you are. Mukama enda. When you walk. Mukaya ngula. When you speak. Know this. You are a lucky donkey. God bless you so much. Amen. Questions in regards to Malawi, the ministry that's going on there. You want to ask me to? I mean, some of you guys, you've heard about the ministries going on. Now you have an opportunity. You Amen. can ask directly to, to one of them. Okay, so any questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, and I'm, I'm, I hear it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let me speak like this. In a camp. Like where we're coming from, Bangula. <clears throat> there are 5,000 people. 600. 645. 2,000. And, diff, and 2,000 families. 145. 145. Mabanja. And those are different families. Tangu Ganzan. Just imagine. If each one of them were to be given a single taint, how many taints would that be? Chimapangitza kuti muna chifocha maro achepi pangono futi matenta kare ugwani nandi maro alipo. And it is because of that that they mix families like, let's say, husbands alone in one tent so that they can do with the little that they have. Understood on that one? Good. Let's go. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Peggy. So, so, like the floods hit one region, and the people from that region are now in the refugee camps. But she's asking about uh, the normal life in the villages. Does everybody have their own plot of ground to farm? Yes, I had it. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is so difficult as I've already said. Where there are over 2,000 families living together in one place. Uh, that if there were to be given land, how big land the land could be. And these people I'm talking about, they are not from one big uh, village. But these people, because of the floods, they have been moved from their places, from different places to 
group them in one place. Tinimawe nandi kupili ambale wanga lo ndi John ya kuzi wako. Pamozi ndi azima ena kuzi wako. There are some other places that uh, Pastor John and Lou and those that came to Malawi. No. Tinapita kwa gawira kwa zipe wa zawa na zimena matandiza zija. We went to distribute uh, cups for the children, uh, the ones that you gave us. It's a big place. But the whole village was swept away. Many people lost their lives. Those that were lucky, they were air lifted they were put at a camp in an upper place looks very easy as I am speaking but then it was too difficult just imagine you are surrounded by water. And it's just like you are on an island whereby maybe you've got a radius of maybe five kilometers and then you're just in the middle. And some people tried to climb tall trees. Three days, four days, early Montengo. Tall trees, not as tall as your trees, but uh, shorter, and they were on, the, on those trees for maybe three days. And those that were weak, they couldn't stand it, and then they gave up and they were taken by the frauds. Some that were carrying babies for long hours, they got tired and sometimes they could choose between their life and the baby and most of the times they throw away the babies and save their lives. It was so pathetic. And all these people that were taken out from were rescued from the floods, were put in one place. As I said, the government provided a, a helicopter and uh, which hovered some, along that area. They did not go much to where houses were. But they were checking on the treetops. And uh, they used to come over them and throw them maybe a net and uh, a rope so that these people could climb on them onto the helicopter and then to the dry ground. Just imagine staying or living in a tree for two, three days without water and food. And they're giving, uh, they're, they're dropping a lot for that person to climb. And that person hasn't eaten or drank anything for three, four days. Surely they were so weak and hungry and dry. Some got the opportunity to be thrown a rope. But because of weakness and uh, dehydration and hunger, even though they were given a rope, they couldn't manage it. And maybe they managed for a short time and then they dropped back into the water and they were washed away. It was so pathetic. Thank you so much. Mm. All right. That was the floods. You know, we've been ministering in, uh, um, in one of the refugee camps there, right outside of Bangula, which is one of the bigger camps. Um, we were the first ones in with firewood, and we've done some other work as well in there. So, and now we're waiting still for land. There's a question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Mose mwambinu madzi apita wherever it was uh, flooded now the water has receded kama nyumba kulibe but there are no houses munda kulibe and there are no gardens munthu ali pakampu akita kujesedwa and the people they are in a camp akita kubasu za kuja and uh, they are leaving what on handouts ndia kuda kutabwele kwao kumea na chokera and now they are being told that they should go back akakalabati if they were to go back on what are they going to leave but nyumba kulibe inapita ni madzi because going back to a place where there is nothing akaja jan what are they going to eat but munda unapita ni madzi the garden was washed nzo vuta kombiri difficult Izo ndiye nshitu yetu imente ngachita kukaa kukaa tontoza ndi mau nthawi zonse This is the work that we used to do uh, to go visit these people and console them through the word of God Hallelujah. Amen. Uh inali ntawina mbali wina gogo chitakata amna li bishop wa mpingu wa Africa na Sam Sugot. Many years ago there was a man called uh, Bishop uh Chitakata. He was the founder of uh, uh African Assemblies of God. Ngandi sindi wali a chama 1985 86. If I can remember very well it was 1986 85. Amali kila inali ba ntawi ya Easter. He was preaching during Easter time. Anakuza kwa mbili za uchimo and he spoke a lot about sin. Anachitia mbuni kwa mbili zo kuzaza mbale watu David and he spoke mainly about David. In night now my work and open song can up. I was so privileged to be found in that open air or crusade. But my main reason wasn't going to listen to the word of God. But I was going there because I was interested in girls that were there I wanted to have one. Komaso sinema ngopita ndi chonjo ni mapita ndi tamwa mwa wandi taledzera. But I was I was going there I was drunk and uh Yeah. But also I was smoking cigarettes. Far away from the word of God. But, Bishop boy. But as I sat next to Bishop Jerry Chitakata. Hearing him preaching. I was touched by the word of God. But I was so afraid. I saw myself to be the biggest sinner than any other sinner that was there. And I was thinking that it was impossible for God to forgive me. Ambuya nimegeza kuti bishop oyi God be praised because the bishop atatipunzitsa kwambiri atapo atatona sira za david after teaching us and showing us the life of david in the bible anali munthu ipitsa nso kwambiri that david did a lot of things anali wakupha he killed ane wachigoro and he was an adulterer munthu opanda chikondizo a person who didn't have much love I really thank God because of David and uh, following some of his good examples. Anavomeza uchimo wake. That when a man of God went to David that David you have sinned 
David did not resist but accepted that he was a sinner. It wasn't easy when Nathan came to David that you have sinned. Then on my own, I started thinking that if David was a king and then he humbled himself. A king that had much, much, much power. A person who had uh, soldiers. A person that everyone revered, but humbled himself and accepted and repented before God. What's more with me, just a simple man like me? It made me to have a spirit of humbling myself. And I went before the knee, the feet of the bishop. And I asked him, please, can you pray for me? I have seen before God and did so many sins. Can I also be forgiven as David was? He said yes. This is the words that he spoke from the word of God. Psalm 34 verse 18. Psalms 34 verse 18. I will read. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and deserves those who are crushed in spirit. Mungu ama kapa fupi ainti magosweka. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he serves all those that confesses their sin. Through that, I saw that it was possible that I could also be forgiven. But the most important thing for one to do is to confess their sins. That I am a sinner before the Lord. Please forgive me. Let me be like what David did when you forgive him. Let me be one of those that are privileged before people. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That is my uh, testimony. Maybe there might be somebody with a different question. Yeah. You know what? Lucky donkey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love it. I am a lucky donkey too. And you know, it's all because of Jesus. And just like Mateo was sharing, you know, here is a man who came and stood and spoke the word of God, and his heart was touched by it. And he did something with that. He didn't just say there and say, well, I wonder if God might choose me or he might find me, but he came forward. And he came to that man and said, what, what do I need to do? Will God be one that will forgive me too? And the answer is yes to that. It is yes. But a person has to come. A person has to receive. You can't receive something that you're not willing to come and take. And that forgiveness is open to anybody. Like David was an adulterer. David was a murderer. And, and you know, Matteo was touched by that because here's a man like that that God grabbed hold of and said, I'll take all that sin away from you. You will be a new man. He's a new man today because of that. I'm a new man today because of that. So is Brighton. Why? Because we just simply received. It wasn't anything we did. We were jerks. And he, and he rescued us. And you know what? I mean, that's available for anybody. And so that's where we close today. If you have not received Jesus and you want to receive Jesus, you need to receive. These guys are here. They'll, they'll pray for you. They'll pray for you. They'll, they'll show you how, just like it happened with Matea, just like it happened with any of us. But you need to receive. 
And so come and ask him. Ask him. Ask him to lead you in that path. You will receive. You will be made right with God. You will be saved. Okay? They're available. If you need prayer in general, after that, you could come to and ask them for prayer. Okay? State why you're coming to them. And they'll pray for you. God bless you guys. Let's close in prayer. Lord God, I just thank you. I thank you for my brother, Matea. I thank you for my brother, Brighton, Lord, and God. And I just, we just praise you that they could be here with us today. We thank you that you could share the word of God with us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have come and that you're ministering among us. We thank you that you are setting people free and that you are giving new life and you are offering new life. May boldness be given to those, Lord, who know they have to respond. And may they come forward and receive from you those good things that you have longed to give. In Jesus' name, amen.